my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. When you push harder, you get worse. Uh, that's sometimes the fact, that you want to learn something, and then you push and push, but as you push, you actually get worse and worse at what you want to become good at. So, and I had a video that was entitled something like, if you want to, you know, or the point was, if you want to learn something and it's challenging, instead of pulling back and trying something that's easier, easier, try something that's even harder, because then when you return back to what you thought was challenging before, it'll be really easy. It really works as simple as that. So if you have a hard time uh, with your string shifting when you're practicing alternate picking, then try skipping a string instead, right? You know, play uh, three notes on the G and then jump for the high E string and back again. And try f focusing on that instead. Then when you return back to your single string shifting, then that will be really easier. And it really works, it really does. But then sometimes when you push harder, it actually gets you know, you get worse by doing that. But that's because we need to talk about the details of what does it actually mean to push harder? Because if you push harder emotionally, if you push harder, like you get stressed when you practice, like I'm gonna do this, right? Because this here is not a learning state. This is a warlike state. The second you get stressed or angry and frustrated, something like that, then your brain simply shuts down. You can't learn, it's not possible. Because basically you have two modes that you can be in. You have a warlike state, a survival-like state, and then when there's no survival, there's no tiger hunting you, if we're thinking, you know, for the majority of our time, as human beings, we've been living, living in nature, and if you're not running from a lion or fighting the, the, you know, another tribe, and everything's quiet, and you're sitting, you know, in front of the campfire, and there's nothing pushing you, then you can learn. But you can't learn, that's a long-term activity. You, you, it, the brain will shut down the second you're stressed, the second you feel like this, the second you feel like that, your brain's simply just going to shut down and you can't learn anything. So the harder you push, the less you learn. But that's a definition of harder, right? Emotionally harder. But if you get stubborn and you just say, I'm going to play this as many times as it takes for me to learn it, and then you simply just forget about trying to get there. You, you, Practice with the metronome, the chords, the picking, the technique, whatever it is. You practice with the metronome and you build in that pattern so you can do it automatically without thinking too much about it at a low level with total accuracy and precision. There's no straining and stressing, no rushing. And then you just sit down in front of the TV, your computer, learn a new language as you're just picking away thousands and millions of repetitions. And if your brain goes, millions, Klaus, I don't have time for that. You know, that will take me years. No, it won't. If you practice in front of whatever you want or talk to your friends, whatever, and you develop that ability to practice in those two stages where you build the pattern and then you repeat it over and over again and you take it way beyond good. When you can do it, then you just keep practicing. That's when practicing starts. That's when you can do it. Because then you want to have it to the level where it's totally unconscious, like brushing your teeth or breathing in and out or driving a stick shift car, if you know how to do that, while you're talking to your friends. That's the level you want to get to. And if you're stopping, but calm and relaxed, and just going to say, I'm just going to put in the hundreds of thousands of repetitions because I know that will work. And I know once I master one thing, it will be so much easier to master the next thing and even easier to master the next. That's the key secret to becoming extremely good at this. So. If, if you're not stressed, if you're not trying harder inside, but outside of you, you're, you're doubling the challenge and you're just simply programming your body to do whatever it is that you want it to do. Because this is not what you want it to do. It's not. You want it to do... But you just want it to do it faster, perhaps, right? Or you want to be able to do... That's what you want it to do, but you just want to... That's what you... But if you practice faster, you build in a lot of mistakes and it just never works. It never works. 
and you will not learn in a stressed state. It's simply not possible. The, in fact, the, the, the better you feel when you practice, the more fun it is, the more entertained you are, the more, ex, you know, the more kind of, kind of expectancy you have inside of how cool it's going to be to learn this, the more excited you are about what you're building, then the more your brain and body is going to want to do it and the better you learn because it's important, right? It's pleasurable. The more you stress and strain and the harder you try in that way, you know, the slower you learn basically. So th really think about that when you're practicing and then double the challenge, but just take it on like, right? Be cool, right? And then just build your skills. It, it's simply a matter of perfect accurate repetitions. That's it. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.